Hey, it's Joe Lyons from The Automator, and in this video that follows here, you're going to see a conversation with me and Tank uh, from the Auto Hockey Forums, or Charlie Simmons, and uh, I had been having conversations with other people about IE dying and, and how is it going to affect Auto Hotkey, and especially the ActiveX control, because we use it for a lot of GUIs, like in the Maestrius Pretty HTML GUI building. Tank had some interesting insights about what he thinks is going to happen, how it's really not a big concern, kind of the history of a comm object. He also thinks that at some point Edge will get a comm object, even though there's a, they're saying it won't. I and mean, even if it doesn't, there's the DLL files we should be able to connect to and automate. But we should be able to write an extension that would allow us, like a Chrome or Edge extension, that would allow us to use comm or, you know, connect to those browsers and automate them. So he's not overly concerned about it. So that made me feel a lot better. I think you'll enjoy the conversation. Uh, some good learnings, some some background and stuff. And uh, it's great talking to someone who knows what they're doing. Cheers. Try to understand that when 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 Microsoft started the whole comm thing, uh, it, it was really kind of a response to everything that was broken uh, between the um, DDE message and, and the security issues that it it created because we're, we're really just sending messages to apps and hoping that those apps are the only ones listening. Wow, yeah. Okay, which itself, DDE was a solution to what happens when we just do the low-level send and post message. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so, you know, interestingly enough, there's literally nothing you can do in the Windows environment uh, that you can't take down to a send or a post message. Cool. Nothing. No. Absolutely nothing. Um, so, so COM became a way to manage memory uh, uh, and and create this kind of controlled messaging format between applications. Just just a language that you're guaranteed to be able to talk no matter how the application changes. Mm. Okay. So you know, navigate is really just a kind of like a steering wheel interface, right? Lots have lots has changed with how navigate actually functions under the belly if you if you uh look into the th things that um uh microsoft has open sourced about ie now but you still have navigate and it's uniform in the way you call it so com became a way to control memory leakage between other applications and talk to a specific application in a uniform way. So it is not itself a language. It is not itself part of the application. It is a connector, mm -hmm. um, a universal translator, if you will. Now, so being COM enabled just means, hey, I will accept COM connections. Okay. And, uh, and in fact, if you look for it, I, I, I no way I'll find it uh, quickly, but like Lexicos even once demonstrated that you can make an AHK script com enabled. So it's actually pretty easy to do. What they're, what it looks like they're doing is they're enabling, they're, there's a movement to enable all of the old iWeb browser to interface communication to edge. Now, now try to understand that from a browser standpoint, we're really still only talking about, you know, navigate home, go back, history, yeah. Yeah. status bar, you know, theater mode. Uh, yeah. Right. We're, we're really not talking about the document object okay. yeah. that remains unchanged. Yeah. There's nothing changing about that. So we're, we're really only talking about a small thing. And so the ActiveX object that we, we see used in GUIs, for example, with like the AutoHotKey GUI, or if I'm doing a Visual Studio, is really an implementation from Shell Explorer, not Internet Explorer. Okay. okay. And that's an important distinction because all that is, is the communication that allows us to talk to the tr Trident rendering engine. Yeah. That's it. That's all it is. It's just a connector to it. 
And, and so we're not going to get rid of Shell Explorer out of the Windows operating system. It's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. yeah, that was why I realized when you why you, you were saying it's not going, we don't, shouldn't worry about it because it's that is embedded. Yeah. And we're still just talking about uh, the, the basic iWeb Browser 2 interface. Now, what's going to happen at some point behind the scenes without any of us knowing it, really, unless we're just watching Microsoft yeah. updates, the implementation of that, uh, ActiveX object that that Shell Explorer is going to switch to a WebKits from the Chromium that oh. Edge is using now. Mm -hmm. That's all that's going to happen. And because if they do anything else, they break so much that it it will be, you know, it, it will cause mass chaos and a mass exodus to Linux. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it, there's just too much of everything that developers create with Visual Studio that relies on all of those same things. Cool. That That's awesome. It, it, it's not changing. It's not going to go away. It can't. Cool. No, that's a big relief. Like I said, I've been talking to several people. You know, we were very concerned about the. I mean, I mean, there's one just because IE was so easy to automate, right? It's a shame that that's going away. Um, but hopefully, at some point, we have a, a a calm object for Edge would be. Amazing. I mean, I think everyone really misses the point that, and this this really just comes out of my experience with other automation tools. Um, anyone anyone can write a Chrome browser add-on that enables communication with the DOM. Yeah, okay. Because that's what that's what Automation Anywhere and Blue Prism and UiPath do. Yeah. They just have a browser add-on that is that okay. you have to install so they can communicate yeah. with the browser. Anyone can do that. Chrome's, Chrome's uh, source and uh, model for building add-ons cool. is uh, open. Anyone can do it. Cool. There, there's even a Chrome add-on to use the Trident engine instead and allow COM. Well, that was, yeah. I mean, years ago, like in Firefox, I think there was a way to, to tell it to use the IE, right? And... Um, I think at times with this is a long time ago, like ten years, eight, eight years ago, I did some stuff with still using IE from within Firefox, if I remember right. It's been a long time, but anyway, yeah, yeah that's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, it, it's really just a matter of writing an appropriate add-on, and then everybody can right. automate this. I mean, right? They'd have to install a plugin, but after they do that, it's like Grease Monkey or something, right? Once you install that extension. Then yeah, you connect to right. It. Then it's then it's always there and always available unless you turn it off. Yep. Um, there's a Chrome-based remote desktop. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. So for every Chrome right. browser you're signed into with right. that, you can connect to it and remote desktop to that machine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember selecting that I wanted to disable that one, but I, I know, yeah, it is there. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it, it's really just you know, it, it's just really writing an extension, a, a small extension mm -hmm. uh, to Chrome and um, enabling uh, uh, certain communication methods. I keep thinking about doing it, but I'm too too lazy and too foggy for it. Yeah, because that, that would, uh, I, I mean, you know, with Deep Dude's class, it, we can do a lot, but compared to how easy it was in IE, it's just, it's just not that, right. that easy. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to that at some point. Yeah. Um, so just, it, it's, the, the awesome. everything's there. And in fact, that's how Selenium does it anyway, is instead of having an add-on that is added to the browser directly, Mm -hmm. uh, they just do a live connect mm. under the hood mm -hmm. to the browser. But that's how Selenium connects and automates browsers. I, I mean, they're net. Imagine an IT infrastructure where no fault services have to be available and we no longer allow Selenium testing. Right. Browser yeah. automation yeah. is not yeah. going anywhere. Excellent, excellent point. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Right. Yeah. 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 Things will be breaking left and right. I mean, hell, when when Azaz and I are doing set, we'll build something in like 
oh my god it's it's so painful you know and then hey try it on another computer now oh and everything breaks um yeah if there wasn't yeah, any way yeah. to- browser automation isn't going anywhere it no. can't right there's too much that relies on it right and um so they they just do their best to keep it obscure enough so that the script kiddies can't just figure it out right right that's awesome Awesome, mate. Well, thank you. That's uh, that's very good news. I was I was really getting kind of worried of creating some pretty looking GUIs with the uh, ActiveX control. ActiveX, thank you. Yeah, ActiveX. Uh, that's yeah. what I was trying to think of. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Com is really just a service that translates in a uniform way uh, how to call those mm-hmm. underlying APIs. Do you and now do you happen to know like for Edge is there are there DLL files that we can connect to in since there is currently no com object, can we use DLLs to connect? Uh, to I, I know for certain that Selenium connects to it, and I know that yeah. Chrome, which uses WebKits, allows such a thing. And so I have to believe, without looking, that there automatically has to be such a thing for Edge because yeah. they're using the same engine now. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. Good. Cool. Very interesting stuff. Hey, if you just watched that video and you felt it was a bit over your head, I would recommend reach out to us at joe at theautomator.com and we offer consulting services where we will help educate you and work with you to level you up. To me, it's best ways that you can start learning auto hotkey and make really significant jumps is having someone assess where you are and then kind of nudge you a little bit higher and higher um, and get your code worked on by someone who's been doing it for a long time.